We have a surprising new development in the world of Slipknot in which a company running the estate of late beloved Slipknot drummer Joey Jordison has filed a lawsuit alleging the band has been profiting off of his personal belongings and a few other claims as well we're going to take a look at. Of course, Joey Jordison is one of the most influential and beloved metal drummers of all time. His passing was truly shocking in July of 2021. It's a loss that was felt by the Slipknot fans around the world. And uh, his departure from the group was highly controversial at the time. Uh, we're going to take a look at that as well. Joey Jordison, though, one of the co-founding members of Slipknot, he had a instrumental massive role in the band's rise to fame in the late 90s, early 2000s, all the way up to his departure. Now, um, the band started and was formed, of course, as most of you know, back in 1995, a band that would go on to become Slipknot. It was formed with uh, Joey Jordison, Clown, and Paul. They would talk about their ideas for the band at the gas station that Joey Jordison worked at famously. And he was clearly a fan favorite for Slipknot fans, myself included, during his tenure, of course, those of us who had that opportunity to see that spinning drum solo that he did was just truly iconic and something that really you could never forget if you saw it in person. And it's his legacy is just over the top and, and it still felt to this day with the fans. And so some of what is referenced in this lawsuit involves Slipknot members actually discussing Joey Jordison's legacy. There's some claims in this suit that the band was using it to promote their latest album, The End So Far. I just wanna add that I'm not here to make any assertions as to whether or not uh, Joey's estate or the company running it, whether their claims are true or whether Slipknot's response is true. I'm just trying to tell you what is being said here and lay this out to you. And then I'll give some of my own thoughts later on in the video. I just wanna keep this as fair as possible. So. Um, Joey Jordison was let go. He was dismissed from the band in 2013. Uh, Slipknot put a statement up on their website briefly at the time. And uh, Joey Jordison later in interviews characterized this decision as cowardly. He said that he was let go by way of an email. Of course, he spoke of that termination, of his parting of ways with Slipknot in an interview with Metal Hammer. And uh, he told Metal Hammer, no band meeting, none. Anything from management? No, nothing. All I got was a stupid fucking email saying I was out of the band that I busted my ass my whole life to fucking create. That's exactly what happened and it was hurtful. I didn't deserve that shit after what I'd done and everything I'd been through. Um, he continued later on. He said they got confused about my health issues and obviously even I didn't know what it was at first. They thought I was f***ed up on drugs which I wasn't at all. I've been through so many things with those guys and I love them very much. What's hurtful is the way it went down and not f***ing right. That's all I want to say. Uh, the way they did it was f***ing cowardly. It was f***ed up. Joey also revealed that he was dealing with a disease known as transverse myelitis, which affected his ability to play drums. He spoke of this diagnosis during the Revolver Golden Gods. He told them, Towards the end of my career in Slipknot, I got really, really sick with a horrible disease called transverse myelitis. I lost my legs. I couldn't play anymore. It was a form of multiple sclerosis, which I don't wish on my worst enemy. Now, Joey also had other bands that he played in, whether it was at the same time he was in Slipknot or following his departure. Of course, there were the Murder Dolls, which was an out incredible band. He had Vimic, he had Sensatum. Uh, and Scar the Martyr as well. All of these bands were popular with the fans. He was touring internationally with these groups, and that was really a testament to that popularity and influence that Joey had. To be a drummer, and after your departure from a group like Slipknot, to be able to have such a successful solo career as well in many different ways. Um, and these were popular bands, and Joey was just a prolific figure. And that is why it was such a profound loss when Joey Jordison passed away like I said, on July 26, 2021, it just was felt around the world with Slipknot fans and his peers alike. And uh, the family at the time released a statement confirming his passing uh, far too soon. They wrote, We are heartbroken to share the news that Joey Jordison, prolific drummer, musician, and artist, passed away peacefully in his sleep, his family said in the statement. Joey's death has left us with many empty hearts and feelings of indescribable sorrow. And of course, many fans around the world felt that. 
as well. And now we have this new lawsuit coming in from a company managing Joey Jorison's estate that is accusing Slipknot of a variety of different allegations, essentially claiming that they are profiting off of his personal property and that they're using him to promote their latest record, The End So Far. And so we're going to go to TMZ who broke this story and they have reviewed these legal documents. And this report says at first, Slipknot is being hauled into court over its late drummer Joey Jordison. The company managing his estate claims the band's cashing in off of his belongings by displaying them in a traveling museum. So Slipknot, of course, has the Knotfest Museum. You may have seen it or been in it uh, at some of their tour dates. Uh, I found it to be a really cool museum. Um, I imagine when they have the Knotfest events around the world as well, it's probably also displayed there. And so inside, I haven't specifically seen uh, the Joey Jordison memorabilia they have in there, but it's clear they're alluding to that. They even say in this suit that it, there was an agreement for it to be used initially and that it was going to be returned, and they're claiming that these items have not been returned to them. The report continues saying that this lawsuit also alleges that members of Slipknot said the album was dedicated to Joey to boost album sales. That's a claim being made in the suit. It says, what's more, the company claims Corey and Michael lied when they told fans they contacted Joey's family to express condolences in the wake of his death. The report continues later on saying, according to the suit, Joey and Slipknot subsequently agreed to return all of Joey's property, including his musical gear and equipment, but the company claims that never happened, saying at least 22 items remain in the group's possession, including things like Joey's masks, his iconic Pearl drum set, and his Adidas sneakers. It says, the lawsuit says some of those items are part of that display in the traveling Knotfest Museum. Now, Slipknot has also filed their own documents and they're asking for this lawsuit to be dismissed, responding in part saying, defendants generally deny each and every allegation and purported claim set forth in plaintiff's first amended complaint and further deny that plaintiff is entitled to any relief whatsoever. So essentially they are just denying all the allegations flatly and they want the courts to dismiss uh, those allegations. So this is a complicated situation with a lot of nuance. On one hand, you have the very disappointing reality was that Joey was let go from Slipknot and this is something that a lot of fans still have a lot of hard feelings about. It was shocking to see him let go, but on the other hand, we've never really heard Slipknot's side of the story or how uh, that departure happened or why it happened. We haven't really gotten exact clarity on that and I don't think we ever will because of things like non-disclosure agreements. Um, but on the other hand, you have this situation of that departure. It begs the question as to whether or not Joey Jordison had any sort of severance agreement in place that gave uh, the band permission to maybe use his likeness in certain instances. The only reason I say that is these sort of things can happen when you part ways with the band in exchange for recurring payments. There can be sometimes concessions made, but I do not know if that is true, and I think time will play out. From Slipknot's response, we don't have any real detailed information yet about how they plan to respond, what they're going to say, and, and why um, they're asking for this dismissal. But it seems for them to flatly deny all allegations. Maybe they do have some paperwork that could explain why they have things like the Knotfest Museum. Um, a number of situations can play out here. Um, number one, you could have uh, quite possibly a settlement. Number two, you could have potentially a trial, which is seems very unlikely. Now, moving on from the personal property aspect in that Knotfest Museum, I also want to touch on the assertion in the suit that by the band dedicating the album to Joey Jordison, that it was a financially motivated decision to boost their album sales. Now, I haven't really seen that with the members of Slip Bad. I do believe they were genuinely deeply affected by his loss, and I do believe at the end of the day that they love Joey. Uh, you know, whether or not the personal property aspect gets worked out or not, I don't think that they're being insincere when they said that they loved him. So with all of that said, this is a complicated situation that has a lot of nuance to it. It's going to take some time to work its way through the courts, and we're going to keep a close eye on this situation. I am currently out of town. I'm on vacation, and we're going to come back in 2024 with a brand new studio for you. Thank you so much for the support. If you're new here at Rockfeed, consider subscribing with notifications on for the latest news and updates.